My name is James A. Crick. I am Head of Technology for uh, Partners in the UK. Uh, I spend pretty much every day talking to partners and customers about uh, Microsoft technology. Uh, talking about technology more broadly, uh, but in particular where Microsoft is investing in, where we sort of see the future and what that mean, might mean to individuals and to organizations of all sizes. Uh, just this week I've spent time with uh, people from government, uh, from education, uh, you know, a real sort of mix of sort of challenges that people are facing. Uh, and it's really refreshing to sort of uh, listen to how people perceive uh, Microsoft and then how they're surprised about how advanced some of our technologies are becoming. So the, the video that's running in the background is actually a future vision. Uh, I, I'm sorry to say that that isn't in Windows 8.1 uh, or the new Office, but, but we're heading in that direction. And so I'm going to sort of set the scene as regards some of the challenges that we have uh, in IT and where some of those uh, uh, opportunities will, will come. This whole thing about moving from invisible cost to visible value, uh, it will become apparent. Um, as we're just a group of, uh, of like-minded people together, uh, we're going to make this quite uh, a fast run through of the uh, slideware, uh, and then I'm going to attempt to do some live demos, which may not work, uh, but I'm going to attempt to do them anyway. Uh, there's a technology I would like to show you. Uh, we only made the preview available on Tuesday, so you know how stable that's going to be. Uh, but, I, but you know, this is the commitment I'm going to make for you today. So let's uh, uh, head through. Um, we're all sort of fascinated about technology and where it might take us in the future. And we can't actually predict where the future is going to take us. But what we can do is start to shape what that future looks like. Uh, you know, people in the IT industry talk a lot about innovation. And I know that, that at Microsoft we sometimes use the word quite a lot. And I'm of a mind where we don't create innovation as such. We innovate our products, uh, but when we put our products in the hands of our partners and our customers, it's what they then do when they apply that technology to real problems does innovation truly occur. And that's what will define the future. And so very much at this point in time, it's about looking forwards instead of looking backwards and looking at how new ways uh, of working can be introduced into organizations. Uh, one of my colleagues, he does a fantastic presentation about business reimagined, a gentleman called Dave Copland. And he's challenging business leaders to think differently about how their business may run. Uh, he sort of challenges the sort of thinking around, you know, do you want to become uh, the record store or the iTunes? Do you want to uh, you know, be in the digital world or the analog world? Where do you sort of see uh, your business progressing? And really challenging new ways of working because the startup businesses, they're not having to reimagine their business. They just imagine what their business would be like and go there. And so for each one of us, we have the opportunity to define what the future will look like. As an industry, there are four megatrends that are dominating uh, what's happening with technology. Uh, I'm, I'm not a marketing person. Uh, I, I am a geek. Uh, I'm not ashamed by this. It, it, it pays quite well. Uh, and, and, you know, I sort of look at the technologies and what that could mean for us. But these are the four megatrends that are shaping uh, our existence. Uh, mobility is by far one of the fastest uh, moving technology areas. It brings great benefits when it comes to productivity, but also brings us some challenges when we think about how we actually manage those devices, how we secure those devices, how we create a secure environment for people to work end to end. Uh, social is becoming more and more of a, an important part of the way uh, businesses connect and communicate. The cloud has been both a disruptive technology but also an enabling technology. Uh, businesses are able to do things that they never thought were possible now by tapping into cloud computing capabilities. And these uh, uh, technologies combined are some of the things that will help you unlock uh, the invisible cost of IT and start to deliver more value. The final call for the Microsoft keynote seminar taking place on the first floor. Genius. On the back page of your show guide, you may be interested to know, hand in your business card at the end of the seminar to be in with a chance of winning a Microsoft Surface Pro Tablet PC. That's the Microsoft wow. seminar wow. on the first floor taking place now. Hand your business card in and be in with a chance of winning a prize. Thank you. Great. Well, that's uh, good that we got that on the, on the recording, that we actually have to bribe people to come to this session with a, <laughs> uh, a pro tablet, nonetheless. Uh, so, uh, well done, Mr. Announcer. Uh, so, as I was saying, these uh, technologies combined are transforming the way uh, we actually deliver services to our, our business users. And then finally, this, this ability to connect more and more devices. Uh, you'll hear this term, the Internet of Things. All of these are acquiring or consuming data and transforming data, and that will lead to challenges around uh, big data as well.
when you look at how analysts see this, they see this as the third platform. They see cloud, business intelligence, and big data, uh, social media coming together to create that new platform for enabling people. And then you know, the way we consume that is through mobile devices. And as you see, Microsoft is very much positioning itself now, not as a software vendor, but as a true devices and services company to make this a reality uh, for our customers. Now, the challenge today is very much where budgets are, uh, are being spent on IT. A lot of the spend is being spent just to keep things running, keeping the lights on, patching and maintaining software, uh, you know, updating disks in uh, servers and so on. We think there's a better way of doing this. And certainly some of the work that we've done with Office 365 particularly uh, is to look at uh, just email as an example. And you know, I spend a lot of time working with IT managers and IT teams and uh, you know, I, I truly respect the effort that goes into keeping those systems running. Uh, sometimes people are in at the weekend, uh, you know, patching servers, upgrading servers, so that when people come in on a Monday morning, they just continue to access their email. Uh, just as a matter of interest, how many people of you uh, in the audience are from an IT function or an IT role? Just raise your hand. Okay. And how many do this kind of uh, work to keep things running? Okay. All right. Just put your hands down a moment. Now I'm just going to ask one more question. Uh, please raise your hand if anybody's ever come down and thanked you for that. It, it rarely happens. Uh, and the reason for this is that it, it goes on in the background pretty much. There's an expectation that technology should just run. And so the opportunity that we all have is looking at the cloud for the benefits that it will bring. So if I move my email workload to a cloud-based system where the cloud service is actually being patched, managed, maintained. The antivirus software that protects those emails is patched, managed, and maintained. When I need uh, more physical disks, uh, the disks are put into those servers uh, as a natural scaling out. Our Office 365 platform, for example, uh, earlier this year, each user had a 25 gig mailbox. That's now moved to a 50 gig mailbox, okay? Now just imagine if you had to update your email system to go from 25 gig to 50 gig for every user, what that cost would have been and the hassle that that would have been. This kind of gives you the opportunity to take that hassle away. And if I'm not running around patching and maintaining, spending all that time in the uh, uh, data room there, uh, keeping the lights on, then it means that I can have more valuable conversations about how I actually help the business transform. Maybe for the first time I actually start to enforce some of those policies about protecting information from leaking out of the business. Maybe I say enable people to connect, connect and collaborate more effectively uh, using things like Link and so on. It really starts to change how IT is seen. Maybe we'll have time to even focus on some of that business information and start to extract value from that and deliver that back to the business as well. So this is where Microsoft has really been spending a lot of its time enhancing our technologies to make this possible. So let's have a look at these uh, in turn. Uh, when it comes to mobility, uh, things have changed quite dramatically. Uh, I would say that as Microsoft as an organization, uh, we very much used to be focused in this blue area. Uh, of this diagram, very much focused on infrastructure. You know, every couple of years you get a new server from Microsoft and other uh, uh, server technologies. About eight to ten years ago, uh, things changed. Uh, we started to concentrate on what people actually wanted from software. I know this seems like, um, well, weren't you doing that all along? Well, no, we, we didn't have social engineers. We didn't have people that were called UX specialists or user experience specialists. But now we have many of these. We have designers uh, that work at Microsoft to really start to understand how you get the best out of people. When you actually connect people and technology, how do I enable them to get the most done? Uh, and so this is our sort of focus. We look at people. We know you have objectives that use devices that consume solutions made up of services that will run on some form of infrastructure. And today, that trend for infrastructure is very much a hybrid approach where some workloads will run in a cloud environment and some will continue to run on premises. And we sort of see that as being the sort of direction that technology is going. As an industry, we've been fascinated by the consumer. Uh, you know, you go out to a retail and you buy a consumer-based uh, PC. And this was fine uh, back in the day. And then uh, we'd also talk about the business user and they'd have a PC uh, in the office. But there's been a realization in the last couple of years. And this is, this is mind-blowing. Get this, ladies and gentlemen. The consumer and the business person are, in fact, the same person. Okay? And the reality of where we are today is that you will use the most appropriate device to get your job done, whether that be a smartphone, a tablet, a PC, or a, a laptop. Okay? And you will switch between a personal task and a business task. And you want that to be a secure and an immersive experience. And this is what we've been working on as we move from the old world of Windows 
to a much more modern approach to how we deliver apps, how we deliver software, how we deliver a secure operating system for our customers. And at the same time, connecting seamlessly to those services that powers our personal lives and our business lives. And the way we sort of do this is very much taking the lead from consumer. It would be fair to say today that uh, in a lot of cases, the experience that people have at home may be somewhat better than the experience that they get when they come into the office. And this is why you're seeing people bring in their own mobile devices in there. And so we spent a lot of time about how we create a rich uh, set of consumer services. And irrelevant of whether I'm using a smartphone, tablet, PC, or in this case, even the Xbox, we continue to drive a consistent service across those devices. Because devices without services are, are just pieces of hardware. And so we really start to bring those devices to light like no other uh, player in the IT industry. So this has been our, our approach that we've made uh, in the consumer space. But we wanted to also bring that across into the business world so it's easy to move uh, from, uh, from role to role. As we look at the sort of business world, unfortunately the Xbox doesn't quite make it into the office, but uh, you see some great all-in-one uh, systems coming through. And again, we replicate that approach, a consistent user experience across the devices. So as I move throughout my busy day and use the appropriate device, I get a fantastic experience. And the devices, I mean, you know, I'm, I, you may think that I'm biased in the fact that uh, clearly I'm advocating a, uh, a Windows phone. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I, I use all kinds of technology, okay? Uh, and we could argue technically I'm, I'm paid to say that this is the best phone. But you try a Windows phone compared to other devices. When it comes to getting things done, connecting to uh, Exchange, Office 365, SharePoint, using the Office uh, uh, applications on there, being able to look at a glance and see exactly what's going on in your busy day, this is a great experience. And we continue that across uh, the tablet devices. This is uh, my Surface. This is my Surface uh, RT, not the Pro. I'm not going to be as grateful as, as you guys will be when you, one of you, lucky people, will win that uh, incredible prize. Um, I love this device. Okay? Why do I love this device? Because it runs Windows. It runs Windows RT. Uh, it's got my Office applications on there. The battery lasts uh, a couple of days uh, when I'm out on the road. Uh, my only criticism of this device is that I forget to charge it up because it just keeps working. Uh, and when I get the occasion to be able to work uh, in Manchester, I'll just flip the stand, drop that down, as I drop the cover, I get the full keyboard. Uh, I can do some real work on this. I'm not making a compromise as regards having a tablet-based device uh, to be able to get things done. And also, when I want to copy that data from this device, or I've got some other data, the fact that I can use this USB port here and plug in a full uh, uh, a USB stick or external drive kind of makes sense, right? It's kind of what I want to do. Uh, and th the realization about how good we got with Windows 8 I uh, came when I got another device. So for those of you at the back, this is, um, this is what a modern laptop looks like powered by Windows. Uh, it's not a black MacBook Air, just in case you were uh, uh, thinking. Um, and the, the thing about this is when I went to, uh, I say, I travel around uh, and I go to a particular uh, a training cafe in Manchester to do some work. Uh, there are all the entrepreneurs and startups. Uh, predominantly, they're, they're using alternative uh, hardware. Uh, and they're intrigued by the surface. And they come up and say, oh, what's that? Uh, and I explain it in, in, in simple terms uh, uh, how great it is. And then when I arrived with uh, a, a new machine, I just opened the machine up in the cafe, started working, and didn't really give it a second thought, but I was connecting back to uh, Microsoft. I was connecting through to Office 365, and I continued to work. And two hours later, I kind of realized that I hadn't put the uh, security code in for the Wi-Fi access, but I didn't need to. It had synchronized that across my devices, and it just works. Now, this concept of Windows, and it just works, is new, uh, I, I would say. It, 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 you know, it's, it works the way you expect technology to work. Uh, and and you know, another thing about this as well is that, if you think about it, we launched Windows 8 uh, around October last year. Uh, and, and if I was being honest, I would say that the feedback was mixed. Uh, I, I think that would be fair. Uh, and we listened to that feedback. And the fact that within less than 12 months, we're delivering Windows 8.1, and we've made significant technology changes to that platform. Shows our commitment to driving this vision for you as our customers. But when it comes to social, this is increasingly becoming a, a, an important topic. And this is not um, updating your Facebook status and, and uh, you know, telling all your mates on Foursquare where you are, or I'm, I'm kind of getting out my depths now, but you get the idea. Uh, this is about how we learn from how people use uh, social media and how we can bring that into a business environment. Uh, you know, as I say, I speak to all different audiences and I look at some audiences and I say they, they've never had the joy or the pleasure of a modem. 
they've only ever known a connected world. And, and you know, they look at email in the same way that we would look at typewriters when it came to word processing. Okay? If they can't say it in 240 characters or less, it, it, it kind of doesn't get said. Uh, and we need to embrace these more modern ways of communicating and connecting people together. Uh, you know, there's a TV show called Undercover Boss. Uh, and in fact, if more organizations embrace what we call enterprise social, that TV program would never need to be made again. The reason why bosses go undercover is to get a little bit closer to find out what's going on in the business. When you embrace something like social enterprise, you speed up that communication. You, you kind of collapse some of those uh, rigid structures to enable communication to be a little bit more easily uh, accessible. And we've been doing a lot of work to bring a uh, technology called Yammer uh, into Office 365, so it just becomes part of that platform. We've already integrated it into our CRM system. It already becomes a natural way uh, of communicating. So we're blending the old way of working with email and so on with the newer social enterprise ways of working to improve and streamline processes within businesses. So we've done quite a bit on uh, a social, and it's not just in a, a textual format of communication, but also with voice. Um, you know, we've had Link for quite some time. It's grown rapidly in the last couple of years uh, as both a cost reduction technology, but also an enabler as well. Uh, you know, I was speaking to a, a, a gentleman the other day, and he was saying as part of his role, he has to do face-to-face -face interviews with certain people. And I'm being a little bit vague because it's a sensitive uh, uh, subject area. Uh, and being in the sort of, uh, 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 the sort of coasts of Scotland, uh, it's, it, that's the jaggedy bit, uh, then to get from one place to another, it can take several hours. Uh, just to get to the ferry to go across to the island uh, where that person is. So the cost and time that's consumed is quite, quite immeasurable. Uh, by using Link, they can actually have a face-to-face -face interview, a face-to-face -face conversation. And that is a valid form of, of uh, you know, engaging uh, with that particular person. So really, really changing the way that people work. Most recently, we uh, acquired uh, Skype, and this year we started to federate those technologies together. So now you can get presence and instant messaging, and also now we've brought voice and soon video, and we're looking at other points of integration as well. So you can run link within your business, and as you connect out to your customers and clients, maybe they're running Skype on whatever device they happen to have, uh, we're bringing that communication together. Uh, again, really transforming the way that people communicate. At cloud, um, it's just going at great speed. Um, you, know, you know Microsoft has been a software vendor. Uh, people that don't get out much in sunshine writing code, uh, that is not the Microsoft today. Uh, you know, we have uh, uh, mechanical engineers, uh, thermodynamic engineers, building highly uh, cost-effective data centers, uh, and our advances as regards our operating system, particularly in the service space, now provides the flexibility for you as a customer to determine exactly how you want cloud in your organization. If you want to build out your private cloud on-premises, absolutely fantastic. If you want to work with our hosting partners and, and have that service provided, that is a choice that you can make. And if you want to start tapping into some Microsoft Cloud environment with Office 365 or our Azure platform, then again, that choice is yours. The great thing about this is you can move that virtual image from platform to platform to make sure that you're getting the right mix of infrastructure to power your business. And this sort of ability to scale, I'll give you an example again from, uh, uh, from our own business. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, something called the Xbox 360. Uh, and the Xbox 360 provides online gaming. Uh, the online gaming community uh, is at this point in time approximately 44 million uh, gamers that, that, that play online. Uh, to power those 44 million users, uh, we run it on about 15,000 servers. Okay? So you can just picture 15,000 servers for a moment, which is not bad. Okay? As we announced the new Xbox One, which will be coming out later this year, uh, we said we were going to scale uh, those servers uh, to support new capabilities uh, that we're bringing to, uh, to the Xbox One. And the gentleman who was announcing this said, we're going to scale from 15,000 servers to 300,000 servers. He, he didn't even blink. I'd be having a heart attack, right? But he, he just didn't even blink. But this is the dynamic flexibility that cloud brings. And again, we're able to embrace that as a business. And that technology is available to our customers so that they can embrace those new business opportunities as well. Now, we'll go into data because data is pretty much uh, uh, you know, something that each and every one of us uh, will come into contact in our day-to-day -day lives. And for those of you that have been around a little while, uh, you may remember some of these classics from the past. Uh, for those of you that weren't around, let me give you a little bit of an update. Uh, in the green, uh, we have VisiCalc, 
classic. Uh, Lotus one, two, three, where are you now? Uh, Excel uh, on the Mac, uh, back in the time when the Excel came out on the Mac, it was in black and white, just like the movies. Uh, it's quite a while ago. Uh, but it's advanced quite rapidly. In fact, the Excel of today, Excel 2013, is one of the most advanced data analytical tools uh, that you can have. And most people have access to that on their PC. Um, and what's happened is, is data's kind of grown up. Uh, we kind of started with the, uh, the good old spreadsheet. Uh, and then most organizations then put a, an executive information system in. Uh, that needed a multidimensional uh, database, uh, which ultimately led to having a, an OLAP, an online analytical processing uh, platform. Uh, are, you, are you with me so far? Okay, this is where it gets tricky. Okay. And so from OLAP, uh, as an industry, we can't just stop there. We need to make this complex. Uh, and so we don't just want uh, OLAP, we need to have, are you ready for this? MOLAP, ROLAP, and HOLAP. Uh, and once we've got those in place, uh, we then start to look at our EIS and realize, ah, we need some reporting. And uh, we can't just have reporting, no, we need to have ad hoc and operational reporting. Whew, good, so, we're, so we're, good, we're doing well. Uh, now what else do we need? Well, actually, we need a relational data warehouse. Good, okay, relational data warehouse, got that. Uh, that led to more data. Now, because we had more data, we now need to manage that data. Uh, so we need an ETIL and an EIM. Uh, so we'll put that in place. Uh, and then that then starts to mean, well, we need to actually improve the performance. So we'll bring column store technology in there. Oh, there's another set of data that we've, we've not tapped into, which requires NoSQL. So we'll put some uh, NoSQL in there. Uh, as soon as you start getting into the world of NoSQL, you're in the world of big data. Uh, and uh, in the uh, great example of the six steps to Kevin Bacon, as soon as you get into big data, you're pretty much into a dupe, right? Uh, are, are you with me? Okay, don't worry. There's not a test later, okay? And just as you, just as you actually digest all of this and think, yeah, I, I understand where we are in the world of data today, the industry does this, uh, and people then just, just start looking for the exit. Uh, we, we come at it from a different angle, right? Don't, you know, don't be under any illusion. We're doing all the smart stuff, right? We're doing all the Hadoop, HD Insight, SQL 2014. We're doing all of that great stuff on the back end. But what we're also doing is thinking about you. That has to then make sense of all that data. Uh, you know, often there's a term BI, business intelligence. Uh, we need business intelligence. We need business intelligence. Ask the person that's using Excel and their interpretation of BI is, we need BI. And you go, yeah, that's what we're saying. No, no, I need basic information. Uh, I need to take this data, I need to get basic information so I can get my job done. Uh, and we agree. Uh, and so we've come back to spreadsheets. You're shocked, I know. I can see it. Um, do you want to see some of the stuff that we've done? Uh, I, I'm going to show uh, three things. Uh, yeah, I've got three things. Uh, one is something that, that you can do today. Uh, another thing is something that will be out l hopefully a little bit later uh, this year. And the third thing is something that we only uh, released on, on Tuesday uh, as a preview, as a very early preview, and not even a beta. Um, so that's why I'm looking a little bit nervous right now. Uh, would that be okay? Would that, would that be all right? Okay. Um, so uh, this, is, um, this, is, this is my Excel spreadsheet. I apologize if you've seen this before, um, but it's worth seeing again. Uh, and for those of you that haven't seen this, you're going to love it. Okay. Um, this is the common problem of data. You have some data in a particular format, but you then have to shape that data so that you can then create charts, graphs, whatever it is, to then explain to somebody else what's actually going on there. Now, I travel quite a lot by train. Uh, the journey from Manchester to London is about two hours, seven minutes on a good day. Uh, and I recall a gentleman sitting next to me for that, for that entire journey, two hours solid, cutting and pasting data out of different cells, trying to tidy a spreadsheet up, okay? Now, uh, you know, unfortunately that person worked for a competitor, otherwise I would have shown uh, this technology. I, I showed him anyway. Um, uh, we've got a better way of doing it. And this is because we started to use some of our research and development. Uh, last year we spent around $10.4 billion on research and development. And I'm always curious uh, where that money gets spent, because if it's not going to me as a bonus, I want to see it come into our products, right? Uh, and so machine learning, uh, we've sort of put that into Excel where it can actually look at that data and it can infer what I'm trying to do. So for example, as I want to break this down by country, I'll start to type uh, Germany in here. Uh, and then as I start to type United Kingdom, it has already looked at the data, understood the pattern, and then just fills that in for me. Please don't applaud just yet, okay? Uh, I know it's quite good, but, but I just want to show you that this isn't, this isn't a, a, a joke, this is real. 
Uh, so let me do this again. So I'm going to do this by city. Um, and again, as I, as I start to uh, enter that data, it will attempt to uh, uh, look at the pattern, but it's not quite got it right. So the Champs-Élysées, that should actually be Paris. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a little data hint here. And then it's done. Okay? This will save hours of people's time being able to formulate their data so that they can use it. And that's available today. Uh, just as a matter of interest, does anybody not want this technology? Good, we can finish early. Uh, so I like that, that's good. And so this is just the start, right? This is, this is how I shape my data. Uh, there's other things that we've done that will tap into the world of, of uh, open data and bring that in so you can correlate your information uh, with the world of data as well. Uh, and then it comes to the point of where I need to uh, visualize that data. And so when it comes to visualizing that data, um, this is how we normally do it. We just, there you go, there's the data, visualize away. Um, this is actually uh, geospatial data. Uh, for those of you that are uh, big data buffs, you'll notice that these are uh, longitude and latitude uh, uh, coordinates. Um, but it, it's hard to really draw a, a view of what that data is trying to tell me. So we've been working on a technology that was codenamed Geoflow. Uh, it's going to be launched as something called Power Map as, a, as an add-in for Excel. Uh, so I'm just going to switch that technology on and, and hope that it will work. Um, it'll just take me a second. Uh, so, so I've got my data, and so now I can actually uh, switch on the, um, the power map, the geoflow view. And uh, so this data uh, is actually from the energy sector. It's from, uh, from Dallas Utility uh, Company. Uh, and it's trying to look at how energy is consumed uh, by uh, properties that were developed in different decades. Uh, and sort of looking at that uh, energy consumption. Now, this can be used with any uh, geospatial data. Uh, and so, uh, you know, just the, this week, uh, speaking at education, they were looking at how they can map, uh, uh, you know, catchment areas, students, and so on. Uh, government were looking at how they can actually now visualize their open data. Uh, let's say this is um, this is a real view uh, because I'm on a touch screen. I can I can move that around, uh, pinch and zoom uh, to look in that data. I've got some more uh, interesting views a little bit further down here. Here's one here, uh, and so you know I'm able to actually now look at the properties that are developed in different decades and see that on the map. I'll just uh, zoom out a little bit. Uh, and, we, and I say, this is on a 3D uh, visualization of, of, uh, of the world, so I can just tilt that down as well. There we go. Uh, so it's quite good. Uh, and the other thing that we're also able to do is to bring the dimension of time into this as well. Uh, so we can actually see how energy is consumed over time and see that correlate into the different uh, uh, property groups. So clearly this area was a big development area in the 70s, uh, and we can see that over time. The great thing about this is it's using my data, but it's consuming the mapping services from Bing and bringing that in. So I don't need to have all of the maps of the world on my PC. I can combine now both the power of my PC and the power of the cloud to make these data visualizations possible. So this is in preview. You can start to take a look at this now. Uh, you know, if you've got any sort of data that's uh, uh, geo-related, uh, you know, previously this would cost a lot of money to bring these kind of tools uh, into an organization. Now it's just an add-on for Excel. Uh, so that's a great way to, to really start to uh, visualize information. Uh, but when we're, 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 we're not done there. Okay? There's loads and loads and loads of information. I mean, just when I was talking about uh, uh, social earlier, um, you know, the whole sort of aspect of uh, social media. I don't know if anybody's uh, uh, done this before. Um, this is a, uh, a website that you can go to. And what it's actually doing is it's, it's highlighting in real time all the tweets that are going on. And so, you know, when organizations say, oh, the social media stuff's not for me, right? I, I'm not sort of saying, look, everybody should uh, be tweeting everything you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. But realize how many people are actually communicating. This is a natural way for people to communicate. And if you're not enabling that kind of uh, speed of communication in your business, but another organization in your industry is, who do you think is going to respond faster to what your customers want? Who's going to respond faster to issues that are being escalated? Uh, and so it's really uh, uh, interesting to sort of see how that uh, pans out. And, and pretty much this is consistent that, that Asia is just all over this stuff. I mean, they are going for it. Uh, and you can actually see what's being tweeted, the hashtags, who's doing it. Um, okay, I've hypnotized you enough. Um, so, so this is uh, you know, the sort of volume of data that you've got. Now, once you start to get quite a lot of uh, data together, uh, bringing that into a spreadsheet and having to learn uh, some average 
um, learning all the, the, the ribbon bar to do charting and so on, it becomes quite challenging, right? Um, what if there was a better way? Okay, you ready for this? See, see, I, I grew up in an era where um, where Star Trek was quite popular, uh, and on Star Trek, I don't know if you ever saw it, uh, they'd go computer, and they'd ask a question, and it would think for a moment, and then it'd give the answer, right? But they just talk in English, right, uh, or American, uh, and it would give the answer. Uh, and we, we we've been sort of working towards that. Think, well, could we do that? with technology today, with the work we're doing around linguistics, with the work we're doing around machine learning, could we actually do that? So this is a, a preview of a technology that we're working on at the moment. Um, and so, so, so here I've actually got a, an Excel spreadsheet uh, that's got all the Olympic uh, medal data uh, from the start of the Olympics through to uh, 2012. Um, and now instead of doing formulas and cells and stuff, I can just ask questions and get answers. Do you want to see it? Okay. So, um, so this is a, a show me the medal count, and then if I can say uh, in uh, 2012. Uh, so first of all, it's showing me the medal count for uh, all of the Olympic Games. Uh, there was 1,753 uh, medals uh, in 2012. Uh, okay, that's 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 interesting. Um, and then what I want to do is, uh, well, how how did the different countries do? So I can say by uh, country. And again, it, it understands what I want to do and also picks the most appropriate visualization for me. Um, but actually, I want to see it by, by pie chart. It's a little bit more in, impactful. So uh, as pie uh, chart. Uh, and again, it will understand what I'm, what I'm asking uh, and it will, it will uh, uh, visualize that for me so I can see exactly how we, we did well, but n not amazing. Uh, but this is just an, an early sort of preview of how being able to actually just type in a question, it maps to your data and brings the answers in the most appropriate way. What do you think of that? Okay. Now I say, being of a Star Trek generation kind of guy, it's like, well, if you can understand what I'm typing, surely at some point in the future, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. And how much faster am I going to be able to start just asking questions? of my business. And by asking questions about my business, I mean asking questions about the data that I've now shaped, that I can now visualize, and that I can now just ask questions of. This is what Microsoft is investing. This is what we are making possible. Technology will not be the limiter. It will purely be down to how we actually do things. And the cloud is making this possible, okay? Uh, we're tapping into all of this cloud uh, computing capability uh, to make that possible. For those of you who've not uh, been aware of how advanced our, our cloud technologies uh, have got, uh, this is a very simple example. If I needed to test uh, a piece of software uh, from an ISV, um, I need to stand up a server, I need to install the operating system, I need to install the database, uh, I then need to uh, get that app and put it on. Um, for most organizations, just, just trying to get the sign off to acquire a server is quite tricky. Uh, and let alone the time it takes to build these things up. What if I could just tap into the cloud for when I want to do development, testing, when I want to try things out, and just spin up machines, uh, use them for the tasks that I need to do, and then when I finish, shut them down. And I only pay for the time that that machine is up and running. Okay? So here I can just say, um, uh, I need a new, uh, I can sort of portal here. I need a new, uh, and in this particular instance, I'm going to say a virtual machine. Uh, I'll go to the gallery. Uh, just this week, uh, our announcement as regards the fact that uh, Microsoft has a relationship now with Oracle, uh, which was once seen as a big competitor. Uh, they now support their database and their middleware uh, on our uh, cloud platform. So if I need to quickly set up a server, I can just do that. If I want to set up an entire SharePoint server 2013 and try that out before I uh, bring that into my organization, I can just tap in and do that. Uh, SQL Server, as you'd expect, but then it starts to get a little bit interesting. Now we've got like Java platforms, we've got Oracle WebLogic, we've got Oracle Database Systems, we've got Linux workloads in there. Uh, you know, whatever your computing needs are going forward, uh, Microsoft is addressing those needs through uh, our cloud computing capabilities. So again, really making the art the possible a reality for every one of our customers. So let's. Uh, uh, wrap up because we don't have uh, much time left. I'm just going to cover a couple of things though before I uh, uh, close off with the presentation. Um, for those of you who may have, have noticed, uh, I, I'm, I'm running Windows 8.1. 
Um, <clears throat> When we launched Windows 8, we, we had uh, feedback that uh, I, I would say was mixed. Um, we listened to that feedback. Uh, and some of the concerns that we heard were uh, the modern user experience that we brought with Windows 8. Uh, in, in essence, the start screen with the, the live tiles. Um, this was maybe a step too far for people that were moving from XP uh, to uh, Windows 8. Uh, there are only 193 days as of today uh, before XP will exit extended support. What that means is that we will no longer release security patches for that operating system, okay? So, you know, we've done a lot of work to make sure that a great uh, alternative to XP would be go to Windows 8.1. Because now what I can do with Windows 8.1 is I can make it so that when a user logs in, uh, they don't come to the start screen, they just come to this desktop environment, okay? Another thing that we've done as well is that we've, um, and, and this is a killer, uh, we've put a, a, a start button uh, there, okay? I just want to be really clear, it is a start button, uh, not a start menu, okay? Um, and this is to bring that familiarity back to, uh, back to your users. Uh, and so when I actually uh, tap on the uh, start button, it will then uh, go to this view, okay? Uh, and this view would then just list all of your desktop applications and all these uh, modern Windows 8 apps will be pushed to the far side, okay? So your user will log in, uh, they'll have their desktop, they'll have all their shortcuts all over the desktop as they did on, on XP. They'll be able to just continue working, running their software. If they do hit the start button, they'll come to a list of their uh, desktop uh, software uh, and they'll be able to access it there. But what that means is you can then bring a consistent operating system for your existing desktop users. And as mobile devices and tablets start to come in the workplace, they're all running Windows 8.1 one set of skills, one set of support tasks, one set of support tools. It just reduces cost and makes your life and everybody that's using the operating systems a lot easier. And when you think that um, at seven inch and eight inch tablets are already starting to come out, uh, you know, today I, I, was, I had a quick walk around. I can see that many of our hardware partners are bringing great hardware out. The Surface has really captured people's imagination about how uh, they can have the full power of a PC in a tablet device. Now, this is truly defining where the future will take us uh, when it comes to computing. There's a whole stack of other great things that we've done uh, with Windows 8.1. Um, uh, you can uh, uh, you know, still get access to preview. There's only 21 days to wait before you'll be able to just go and buy a copy. I'm not a salesperson, but that's the, that's the reality where we are. Uh, and you know, we think we've really addressed the challenges of today, but look forward to where people would like to go in the future. Okay. Let's uh, close this off. So we had a look at data. We had a brief look at uh, uh, Windows 8.1 there. I mean, ultimately, we're bringing a whole series of technologies together uh, so that you can transform your business. So you can start to think, well, what does the workplace of the future look like? Organizations that are embracing mobility, embracing link, uh, they're managing to reduce um, operational costs by actually closing some of their smaller offices down and actually freeing up people to be more productive where they choose to work, but building more collaborative environments in their main offices to bring people together. So this is not about uh, you know, taking away the social aspects of work. It's about transforming work and how we actually get uh, better results from our people. I guess if I was to leave you with three things to consider. Uh, one would be, what are you doing today to empower people that use technology? Uh, you know, are, we, are we giving them the best experience? Are we giving them the most secure experience? And certainly the work we've done with Windows 8.1, the new Office 365 technologies, how they all come together, uh, that's really sort of making that possible. When it comes to uh, maximizing IT and being more flexible, you know, Office 365, moving some of those workloads to the cloud, that's really gonna help. Uh, when I showed you the uh, asking questions about the Olympic medals, uh, that is something called Power BI. Uh, it's something that we have as a preview at the moment, and that will be an additional uh, platform that will work with Office 365. Uh, and so we're looking at how we bring business intelligence and business information uh, to our Office 365 customers uh, with Power BI. When you do these two things, deliver greater flexibility with IT and empower people, you will be able to transform your business. You will be able to set yourselves up for the future. You will be able to differentiate in challenging and competitive marketplaces. This is what technology can enable today and the investments we're making in the future will make sure that we can do this faster and more easily for every size of business. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I would like to say today.